The first part of the Atlantic City update for Fallout 76 is currently live on the player test server, and after playing through both missions, there's a lot to talk about. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing my first impressions about the update, the goods, the not so good, and a couple of things that I really hope are subject to change, as I think it's really important to preface this with a gentle reminder that this is the player test server, and parts of this update are definitely a work in progress. Partially set up side quests, missing UI, and a good amount of time before part 1 of the Atlantic City update will release in December means that this won't be the final version before release. That being said, you can only judge what's in front of you, so here are my first impressions of the two Atlantic City expeditions currently available on the PTS, and my general thoughts on the new world space, factions, enemies, and a larger narrative. Starting off at the White Spring Refuge, there's a new character to meet. Jeremiah Hopkins is a travel agent from Atlantic City, currently residing in Appalachia. A charismatic, optimistic salesman, trying to bring visitors to Atlantic City, he works out of a kiosk near Giuseppe de la Ripa's shop. But while you're here, you're also directed to check the Atlantic City billboard. This will display available side missions, and this is definitely partially set up currently, as I've run through the only available side mission, Region of the Dead, to completion, and there's a fair bit missing or seemingly not working currently. More on that later though, as the narrative building in this side quest was the most interesting thing added with this update in my opinion. As long as you've already completed the initial responders missions to access expeditions, then you really don't need to do anything else to get ready for Atlantic City. Head over to your map, select expeditions, and choose Atlantic City, where you have two new options available. These are two new missions, and they're called Tax Evasion, which will take place in the Casino District, and the most sensational game located on the boardwalk. The format for these is pretty much exactly the same as the Pip missions. They're split into different stages, with each stage varying each time you load up an expedition. To best showcase this, let's start with a rundown of Tax Evasion. This is located in the Casino District, an area shrouded in a green smog, and home to many overgrown, it's sparsely populated with some area to explore, and two big casinos being the focus. Your point of contact is a new character called Billy Belt Buckles, the bookkeeper for the resident mob outfit in Atlantic City, the Lombardi family. He's found himself in hot water with the other two factions. The showmen and auditors from the municipal government are both out for his blood, and each stage centers around completing objectives in the large Neapolitan casino and hotel, and also the Club Quintinos, where the family is actually based out of. Stages for his mission include hunting down Mooney leaders, locating listening devices, killing overgrown in the basement, and collecting casino chips. To make things a bit more challenging, there are also extra objectives to complete, which will give you better rewards. It's exactly the same principle as the pits, except this time, instead of collecting ingots or finding a fanatic skeptic, these mostly relate to another new character called Sal Sticky Fingers. Using the chaos in the Neapolitan as an excuse for a bit of extra profit, he wants you to loot improved slot machines, which have been tampered with to steal caps and also to activate the anti-cheat detection system, which will kill a gambler in the casino and free up their earnings for collection. And the final optional objective is a timer for the first stage. There are a couple of things in this mission which I'm hoping are subject to change, which I'll run through later on in this video. But moving on to number two, we have the most sensational game. Given faction focus, weather and location, this is actually set in the boardwalk. The game's creator, Veraccio Cruz, invites you to take part in a bloodthirsty contest against other civilian competitors and the Batsuri twins. You can meet them before starting the game, and are the resident champions of the contest. It's probably worth chatting to them anyway, as you can trigger some extra challenges which include emoting after taking down competitors, finding a prize teddy, and, a, and there's also another timer. Same as before, completing these extra challenges means better rewards. But what does the game actually entail though? While the whole concept seems to be a nod to the most dangerous game, the classic short story by Richard Connell, about hunters hunting other humans. And although the first stage includes killing an overgrown keeper to loot a key to free some prisoners, it's mostly centered around killing off those other competitors. You can complete the emote challenge pretty early on by just putting them down. Next, you're headed inside the showman's pier to locate the Aquarium of the Atlantic, but en route you'll face off against one of the twins in a skirmish, and in this location is where the optional teddy bear can be found. Finally, head down the lift to battle it out in what is probably the best new interior location, added with the update in my opinion. Protect an NPC while they collect blood packs before a final showdown against the twins, under the watchful eye of the mysterious Mother Charlotte. So, that's a breakdown of what to expect with each mission. Before diving into what I did and didn't like about those, let's talk about those extra bits of content that the pit didn't have. Although a work in progress, the mission Region of the Dead did reveal some pretty interesting backstory and story setup related to the Lombardi family. Tasked with speaking to Fabio Mondadori, who as you can see is definitely a work in progress with no voiceover currently, you're investigating a shakedown that a gang of raiders are attempting to pull. This eventually leads you to the Neapolitan to investigate a conspiracy surrounding the current whereabouts of the head of the family, Quentino Lombardi. Missing shipments of devil's blood, mysterious notes about other factions asking after him, correspondence about needing constant chems, and what appears to be the planning of a heist 
definitely had all the hallmarks of what could be a pretty fun Fallout quest, but in its current state, it's definitely pretty far off being ready it would seem. Something to look out for in future iterations of the test server. What is more fleshed out though are the games you could play in the casino. Heading over to the Neapolitan after completing the mission, or utilising a pretty convenient bug which I'll show in a minute, allows you to gamble to your heart's content. And you do have options, the slot machines are pretty rudimentary, pay some caps and see if you get lucky. But the roulette tables are fully set up, and I proceeded to lose pretty much all my caps in one sitting, so it definitely works. My low level PTS character was sadly too weak to use the world's biggest slot machine, so I'll definitely be back to try that out next time. We've reached that point in the video now though for some reflection. What do I think of the update so far? Overall, I'd say this update has been a little bit underwhelming for me. The two missions are good, but both have aspects where I'd like to see some changes, and my biggest complaint currently also relates to the entire world space. Not only are the maps relatively small, but they feel empty. Locations like Quintino's and the Neapolitan are practically empty except during missions. The latter becomes particularly chaotic though given how many showmen, moonies and overgrown will spill out onto the casino floor, but you won't see any civilians or gamblers using any of the stations, which is something that you seem to see in some of the promotional material. The bars are unattended, the rooms have no occupants, and this is particularly problematic I think for Quintino's. Most of the time I would only find Sal, Billy and Fabio inside the entire building. The boardwalk is slightly more going on, but it still feels a bit empty. Once you reach the end of the game, you also find Mother Charlotte waiting with Horatio in a large fully stocked bar and restaurant, which is also empty. It's quite possible that this is simply unfinished, given the other elements for our work in progress, or perhaps the option to freely explore is something that comes later with each location, filled with more characters. Something I did discover though, which I'm assuming is a glitch, is if you start the tax evasion expedition, you can actually access the boardwalk through a door off to the side. This wasn't possible with the pit of course, and doing so currently removes the mission and technically allows you to explore both locations to your heart's content. Some smaller things which I'm hoping are due to it being a work in progress, are a lack of unique assets. At the end of tax evasion you face off against Buttercup, leader of the Moonies, who uses a suit of Raider power armour. Hopefully that's going to be swapped out for one of the new Atlantic City suits. There's also the Batsuri twins who are simply wearing a reskinned version of an already existing Under Armour. In the aquarium you're surrounded by fish tanks of various sizes, you'll see sizes telling you what once lived in each of them, but inside it's the bog standard salmon, trout, or one of the other variants of fish swimming around. I'm not sure if that's me being overly critical there, but it would be nice to see a bit more variety. At least the Beluga Theatre does at least include those classic Fallout whale assets. It does really feel like something bigger is missing currently. There was mention in the deep dive that Atlantic City hasn't fared as badly as some cities, but I would argue on first viewing, but it is doing pretty badly. They've really leaned into this Last of Us style atmosphere for the casino quarter. If trogs are unique to the pit, it would seem that the overgrown are unique to Atlantic City, and their origins, although currently unexplained, are definitely an interesting topic of discussion. Judging by this quote, it would seem that the further into the city you go, the worse this actually gets. But what could have actually caused this? My mind went straight to the aggressive fungus spores of Vault 22, a deadly organism originally created at the Big MT, which turned the majority of Vault dwellers into fungus spore carriers. But there's also potential similarities to the Vault 94 Gek explosion, which resulted in thick fog pouring from the Vault's entrance, transforming the surrounding area into what we now know as the Mire. At the very least, I would hope to see a fully fleshed storyline in the Part 2 update exploring the cause of these overgrown and how they've impacted the city as a whole. The other new creature introduced in Part 1 was the Lesser Devil. Live, fast and very aggressive, they behave like small death claws with some unique attacks including a tail whip. So far I've only found the two, but reading notes it would seem that their impact on the story in Atlantic City is pretty big. The drug Devil's Blood features heavily in notes, conversation, and seems to be a big part of the family questline, which is currently unfinished. But as things stand, these two lesser devils seem to have no real function in either mission, so I'm looking forward to seeing how they will actually feature more prominently. So in summary, I don't want to be too critical at this early stage, but it does seem like a lot is potentially riding on that part 2 update. Once these two missions are fully fleshed out, you're surely looking at a similar shelf life to the pit expeditions, grinding for some pretty good rewards in fairness from Atlantic City, but not much else. I'm definitely more interested in the lore and narrative side of this update. There are already hints, notes, terminals and that partially set up a quest, which gives me a little bit of hope that these side quests could be quite fun, but only time will tell. That's it for today though, let me know your thoughts on the PTS for Atlantic City Part 1 down in the comments, I'd love to read them. If you enjoyed this particular video, please consider subscribing to help the channel grow. We post a variety of Fallout 76 content, so turning on the bell icon is definitely the best way to stay up to date. With that said, I am off, thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.